Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the uh, typewriter video series. And uh, what I've been busy with today is my entire collection of typewriters. I have been working to get them photographed, to get typing samples done, and to get the serial numbers collected because I'm going to update my typewriter inventory on the typewriter database. Stay tuned. One of the most important resources that we have as typewriter aficionados is Ted Monk's typewriter database. And it has just gotten better over the years. Ted has put a lot of work into it. There's even a mobile version. It's a real resource for us typewriter people because you can use that data that pe uh, people have already entered in to figure out maybe how old your typewriter is. And uh, Ted continues to update it with more information he gets from the legacy era of typewriters, uh, manufacturers, uh, records, and all that. So I registered some of my typewriters years ago, maybe almost a decade ago. I don't remember how long ago it's been, but I've been guilty of not updating my typewriter inventory on the typewriter database, and I figured it is high time that I do so. So I've been working most of today, interrupted by some visits of people at the house here, but otherwise I've been working pretty much nonstop today, getting my inventory uh, completed. And uh, let me just show you kind of what I do here, what I've been doing to, to inventory my typewriters. Well, I started with a clipboard. <laughs> and a legal pad. And I just have a list I'm making of each typewriter. And I'm just listing the model and the uh, manufacturer's name of the typewriter, the serial number, the whether I've taken a photo of it, and a typing sample of it. So that's just my own personal way of tracking how I'm doing this. And I just started at the top and worked, worked down the list. I, I have off camera is my desk, and there's my Olivetti Underwood 21 is sitting there. There's one, two, three, four typewriters sitting around the uh, office here. There's two typewriters out in the patio room, two more in the garage, and then the rest of them are behind the curtain in the closet. So I've been slowly working through it, and I have, let's see, one, two, three, 15 typewriters thus far, and I just finished uh, getting the serial number off the Triumph Norm 6 here, and I just finished taking a typing sample. And let me show you that if I can find it. So that's what I do with the typing simple manufacturer's name, model, and the serial number, and then I do a lowercase and uppercase of the keyboard. So I'm going to be scanning these or photographing them and uploading the typing samples onto the database, but also now I have all of these typing samples as records that I can keep on hand in a file. So I have a sample and I can kind of look and see, like there's a few of them. Oh, I was noticing my Hermes Rocket, I'm sorry, my Smith Corona Skywriter is doing a little bit of double printing. Like something's going on with the line spacing or something, uh, maybe the timing of the escapement or whatever. There's a little bit of shading going on there. So that tells me, uh, you know, it's a good way to test the typewriters and see how they're working and all this. So. So in preparation for photographing the typewriters, I take a little soft cloth and I like to wipe some of the dust and whatever. Some, you know, the typewriters do get dirty and maybe the last time you used it, like in the case of this one, was yesterday at our typewriter meeting, the Albuquerque Typewriter Society, and I didn't really have a chance to wipe it down since I when I brought it home. So I'm just gonna wipe it nice. And if you have any like discoloration or, you know, blemishes on the platen, you might want to turn the platen to a position where it looks a little cleaner. Center the little pressure rollers on the paper bale. Any chrome or nickel trim, those show fingerprints. Not that you may necessarily notice them in the photo, but it's kind of nice to wipe it all down. So I'll wipe it all down and get everything set. Then the other thing is it's nice to have a good lighting setup. Now I have really good lights here on my video table. I got two on each side, so it's pretty even. I'm going to center this up and then I'm going to take a digital camera. This is my Panasonic Lumix G7 and I'm going to photograph it from about where you're at, just a little higher, looking down on the table. 
When you're taking images of your typewriters for the database galleries, uh, you might want to decide whether you want the paper supports to be raised or lowered. It's up to you. Some typewriters, they stick up quite high, and to incorporate the entire paper support in the photo might make the rest of the machine a lot smaller. So that's kind of what you have to decide there. Uh, the other question is whether you want to shoot the typewriter straight on or like a quarter side shot from the corner, front corner, to get a little bit of the side and the front of the typewriter. But that raises the other issue. With the typewriter database, you have the opportunity to have more than one picture. You can have an, all four sides of the typewriter, and you can even have pictures of the case or any other special ephemera that comes with that machine. So make sure you take advantage of these features in the typewriter database. The typewriter database and this whole process of going through your collection, collecting your serial numbers, typing samples, photographs, this is really the start of an opportunity for you to document your typewriters and have an ongoing, let's say, a folder or a document. And that would include things like a maintenance history. You might want to have the history of the typewriter since you've owned it. What have you done to it? What kind of major maintenance? When was the last time you replaced the ribbon? What kind of ribbon did you put in it? Just any of the other issues that it still has. And maybe you didn't know it has issues until you just tried it out in preparation for uploading the uh, information to the typewriter database, maybe you discovered, hey, there's a problem with this uh, machine, and I discovered a couple of mine are having little ghosting problems and some of the letters and things like that. So this is an opportunity to start a little logbook for every one of your typewriters and document the issues that still need to be fixed. So one bit of advice I'd have for you uh, before you make your typing samples is Make sure, you, first of all, the ribbon advance is working on your typewriter, and then advance the ribbon to a fresh part of the ribbon, especially if it's a typewriter that's been sitting around in the closet unused for a while. That middle part uh, that's in threaded in between the guides and the vibrator might be a little dry. And then take a scrap piece of paper and do some test typing with the machine just to make sure that it does print good and none of the letters are blocked up, uh, dirty looking or whatever. If they are, clean them a little bit. And then uh, you can go and do your typing sample. And when you do your typing sample, make sure that you're doing good solid force on the typewriter so the imprint is nice and dark. And while you did your typing uh, testing on that machine, make sure uh, that if there's any issues, like uh, one of these, what is it, my Skywriter had some issues with kind of a double striking effect, like a little ghost letter right next to the main letter. It, it may have something to do with the pressure you're applying or the, the touch adjustment or, you know, and so you figure out the optimal way to uh, make a good solid imprint. And then uh, finally, I would advise you when you do the typing sample, um, I like to do this way, which is each letter s separated by a space. And then give it five spaces and then do the same row shifted, so it's uppercase. And then you also want to stagger the rows so that they correspond to the way the keys are staggered on your keyboard itself. So this not only gives you a sample of every character, but it also gives you the layout of the keyboard. And I think that's a pretty important thing to document on your typewriter, the layout of the keyboard. That's, that's one of the main purposes for doing this. It not only tells you the typeface, but it tells you the layout. So do a good, careful job of getting that type sample and use some good paper, good solid paper that will uh, photograph nice and clearly with good contrast when you do photograph it. And that reminds me, uh, when you do take a photograph of your typewritten piece, your sample, you could use a flatbed scanner. That's probably one of the best ways. Or if you're taking it with a camera or a cell phone, uh, my advice, of course, is to have it well lit from both directions. If you're using a cell phone, I would advise you to zoom in a little bit. Pinch in on the touch screen on the camera and zoom in a little bit if your camera offers that. And the reason why is certainly on my uh, iPhone 6S, at the widest setting, there's a little bit of barrel distortion or pin, pin cushion distortion, and it's going to make those lines a little bit distorted. So if you zoom in just a little bit, it's going to make things a little bit straighter and neater. Of course, if you zoom in a lot, you're going to lose resolution, but uh, zoom in a little bit on a cell phone just so it gets a little bit more rectilinear image. And of course, 
um, make sure that the shadow of the camera isn't being cast upon the paper and don't do anything dumb like have your camera strap hanging in the image or whatever. So square it up nicely. You don't want to keystone it left or right or up or down like that. Just dead on, nicely lit. And then you can uh, finish tweaking this, the image in your photo editing software, get it all nice and cropped in and straight and the contrast is good. And make sure it's not blurry. Zoom in on your image once you've taken the shot and make sure the letters look sharp, right? And then I'm going to check off on my list. Yes, I photographed the Triumph Norm 6. I got the serial number. I did the typing sample. So I'm going to basically follow this entire procedure with all the rest of my machines. And uh, when I'm done with that, then I'm going to have to take all of these typing samples and photograph them. Probably I'll go ahead and just photograph them with the camera so that that camera is going to have JPEGs of all the pictures of the typewriters and all the type samples. Then I'm going to put import those images to my computer, going to tweak them whatever they need to be, and then I'll be able to upload them to Ted Monk's website, to the database, and get my, my record updated. There is definitely a one megabyte image file size uh, limit for both the pictures of your typewriters and images of the typing samples. So there's a really good question you might have, Joe, do I really have to go to all this trouble of photographing my machines and getting the serial numbers and figuring out where the serial numbers are on the machine and, you know, making a good type sample and photographing the type samples and getting all that together? What's the point of that? Well, it's really about us as typewriter aficionados, a community of typewriter adepts, and how we can support each other as more people get serial numbers and information about typewriters together in that database, we can learn more about the history of these marvelous machines and we can figure out more about their legacy and how many were made of each model and just there's a lot of things that you learn and when you come around to finding a new typewriter, it might be easier next time to figure out how old it is. What? How old is this machine? Well, we don't really know that unless we have a resource like the typewriter database. So I just encourage you guys, pull those machines out of your closets or wherever you keep them and get pictures made, get typing samples made, get the serial numbers collected, update your own personal records, and then upload all that information to the typewriter database. I'll leave a link down below for the database, and I just encourage you guys, use that as a resource. But I hope this encourages you guys, get your typewriters registered in the database, like I should have years ago. I am guilty, yes. Okay, until next time, guys, stay creative, have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.